Hey, so I'm going to talk through how you go about testing pull requests in the Mortic community and this is the case for bug fixes but also for features or any changes really that happen in the code base of Mortic. So we use a tool called Gitpod to do all of our testing in the browser which means you don't need to install Mortic locally or do anything like that. The first thing I suggest you do is sign up for GitHub at github.com uh, if you don't have an account because you'll need that to actually leave comments and leave reviews. The next thing is to install the Gitpod extension for your browser. So if you use Chrome or Firefox, there should be browser extensions for Gitpod. And what that does is gives you a really simple green button. You can see it here um, on lots of different places in Mortic that allows you to quickly spin up a Mortic instance with that thing applied. So whenever we're testing bug fixes in the community or enhancements, usually we need to actually confirm that that bug fix is actually working and to do that we need to reproduce the bug and then we need to actually apply the pull request and check to make sure that it fixes the bug. So the way that I find easiest to do this is once you've got the browser extension installed you go to code and this is like the default thing that you'll land on when you go to github.com slash mortic slash mortic and up here you'll see a git pod button. So when you click that it will open the branch that you've got here selected. So at the moment I'm on 5.x. That's important because sometimes you might be testing an older version so you need to change to like the 4.4 branch but for now we'll go with, with 5.x. And when you click the git pod button it will open in a new tab and it will ask you to log in with your github account so you just click to allow it to uh, use your github account and when you do that it will then open up uh, a browser that looks something like this. Yeah, so it takes a while to load. You'll see all of the different things that ha have run through here. It maybe takes five or six minutes to go through. So set it going, go and get a cup of tea and come back. Um, but basically what this does is it, it pulls down all of the things it needs to load, installs them all, sets them all up and installs Mortic for you. It will also give you some green text that's not showing here because this I'd already started this um, instance, but some green text that tells you the default login is admin and the, the password is Mortic. And the other things you'll need to know about this interface, so on the left hand side this is a code editor. So if you needed to make any changes, uh, you find the the um, information in the same location that you would in your in your own Mortic instance. So if you're familiar with this, for example, you can find your local.php you can open it and edit it here and save changes and that actually saves the changes to this instance of Mortic. So it's live, you can, you can edit and interact with the files here. The terminal is where you would enter all of your commands like your cron commands or any of the other commands that you might need to use to interact with Mortic, you do that here. One thing to bear in mind is that you must prefix it with ddev exec, so ddev exec because that runs it in the in the um, container where the web server is running. So we'll go into that in a minute. And the other thing that's helpful to know is ports. So ports we have installed with this web server, uh, uh, phpMyAdmin, Mailhog, there's also Redis Commander and things like that. So all of these ports that have got green dots are open ports and you can open them by opening in a browser like this. Um, and in this case it's saying not found but Anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, so what this allows you to do is like open your mail hog or open the uh, PHP my admin in a new window so you can interrogate the database or you can interrogate um, emails that have gone out and make sure that the information that's going out is, is being sent out correctly. So those are probably the, the main areas that you'll need to know. And the other thing to mention is down the bottom here you can see the git icon with 5.x so this tells you which branch you're actually on at this time. So it lets you know what this instance is actually running. So if I looked at the other instance when we open the PR, that will be different. It will be the name of the branch where that pull request is actually um, being made. So the first thing I do is uh, load up some what we call fixtures. So it loads up a bunch of contacts, segments, emails, landing pages, stuff you can use for testing. It means you don't have to reproduce it every time, which makes mu things much easier. So to do that, we do ddev exec, which is what I was just saying, bin slash console, and then d colon f colon l. So that stands for doctrine fixtures load. And what that will do is, oops, because this wipes out the whole database, it says, do, are you sure you want to do this? So never do this on a production system, only when you're testing. 
um, you have to say yes to actually allow it to do that because you're wiping the whole system. So it just makes absolutely sure that you know what you're doing. And that will just uh, purge the database and then create lots of sample data. And at the top here, you'll see the login screen for Mautic. When you do this, it removes the users as well. So it will log you out if you're already logged out, logged in. So we just open in a new window. And the, the default login is always admin and Mautic. So we'll just log in and we're expecting to see the Mautic interface with a bunch of contacts that have already been created, which you can see here. You may also want to do the Mautic segments rebuild uh, cron command because um, sometimes the segments don't build fully. So that's just worth bearing in mind when you're testing, but for, the, for this one, it doesn't matter. So what we want to do is to check what the current behavior is. So if I go back to the pull request, this updates the country name from one thing to another thing. So in the current existing instance, it will be this. And in the new instance with the PR applied, it will be this. So what I want to do is just have a look at the contact. I mean, it's not essential for you to do this, but it helps to show you what you would do if you were testing a bug. And then I will type in SWA and I can see that country is listed here. So this is in the current 5.x um, branch. So what is currently in Mautic? So that's fine. I've checked that and I can see that. If it was a bug, then you would be like, yes, I confirmed the bug. Now what I'm going to do is in the um, pull request, we've also got a Git pod icon here at the top. So when you click on this one, it will open a Mautic instance with this pull request applied, which I've already done because, as I said, it takes five or six minutes to do. So, you know, it's easier to do it quickly here. So at the bottom, you can see I mentioned update country name. Um, Swa I can't say it. Swaziland. Uh, Swahiland 5.x. So that's the name of the branch for that pull request, which you can always find here at the top. So you can just double check that you're on the right on the right one. Sometimes it can get confusing if you have multiple Gitpod instances open at the same time. So I'm going to do the same again. ddev exec. This becomes your favorite command when you're testing a lot. And then dfl. Yes. And that will then wipe that database and it will make sure that all of those sample contacts are there and it's ready for us to test. It also creates a sample user called sales user, I think, which is sales and Mautic, which has restricted access. So that's useful if you're testing permissions and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Mautic instance in a new window, make sure this is finished so we don't get logged out again. And, and yeah, just double check that you're on uh, the right branch. And some other thing to mention is that when we test, we always test in development mode. So you'll notice that in the URL, we've got index underscore dev dot PHP. And at the bottom, you've got this um, bar, which gives you information about the Symfony framework. So that's because you get extra logging and extra errors. Things actually stop usually in development mode if there's an error rather than just failing silently in the background. So, so now we're into Mautic. We've got the same instance. We've got the same contacts. So now what I'm expecting to see is when I edit the contact, I go into the country and that country is no longer there anymore. It's been replaced with the correct name for the country. So that's what we're expecting to see. So that is basically what you have to do for testing. So if it was a bug, you would test to make sure that the bug has been resolved. With this, you might also think, well, where else might countries be used? They might be used in filters. They might be used in segments. So we might go to segments create a new segment and then um, go to filters, choose country, and then make sure that it's there. So if you want to be really thorough, you can go and think through all the different things that you might do with a country and make sure that that works properly with this new version. Um, so one, the important part is that once you've done a test, you need to tell us that you've done the test. And that means that we can then say, yes, at least two people have, te have checked this, this feature or this bug fix. So what you need to do is go to files changed at the top of the pull request. 
And on the right hand side, you'll see a green button, which is review changes. Now, if you're a developer, you can also do code review. So you can go through and check the code. This is all the changes that have happened in this pull request. And if there's anything that you spot that could be done differently, that isn't quite right or whatever, you can actually leave comments in the code by using this plus button. You can make a suggestion using this suggestions button to what you think the code should be or what the change should be. And then you can start a review. But in this case, I'm assuming we're just testing as a user of Mortic. We're not a developer. So we go to review changes and we click on approve if everything is great, if everything's OK. The important part here is that you leave a comment to say what you have tested. Yeah, you can also use screenshots. You can use um, video recordings to show a video cast. The video recording is very helpful if something didn't quite work as you were expecting, because it allows the developer who made the pull request to check what you're doing and they can then check it themselves. And it's also makes sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing with testing, because sometimes it's not fully clear what you need to do. So leave a comment that says something like, I've checked to make sure that this new country is replaced in this PR. It works fine in contacts and segments, but I haven't tested what happens if I've got an existing instance that uses this value and then we update to this version, run the migration and make sure that it works. So you need to make that clear because someone else will need to check that part to make sure that it works with an existing instance with data that they, you then update. So just be sure to leave those comments and also be nice and say, hey, thanks for the PR or great work or whatever um, and hit submit review. If there's a problem, do leave a video because it is so helpful. So I use Screencastify, but you can use Loom. There's loads of other pro programs out there. Explain exactly what you tested. Explain what you were expecting to see and what you did see. And also when you're testing, it's a good idea to just keep an eye on the logs so the logs folder is in um, var on the left hand side var logs and then you'll see um, some files in here just keep an eye and see if there's anything that comes up that suggests there's an error if you do get an error if something doesn't work you get a little flash that says that the, it couldn't be executed or something crashes with a 500 have a look at the logs file and make sure you include that in your feedback if you're writing code, you can use this button to actually select a block of code and put it in a code bracket so that it doesn't look horrible. And that's it. You submit the review. That's your contribution done. If you don't want to approve or request, like you found something and you're not sure if it's right or wrong, you can leave it as a comment. OK, so that means that there has been someone has left a comment just like a message in the stream. There's no approval or reject. So there's no kind of formal review. The reason you have to do this step is because this is what tells us that there's been a contribution, but also this is what GitHub uses to know that it's OK or not to merge a PR if we've got approving reviews. And if you re request changes, you're then expected to come back after they're fixed just to make sure that it does work now, that the changes that you've suggested or the things that you found didn't work have actually been fixed. So it will say this person has um, requested changes and hasn't actually reapproved. So it's just worth bearing in mind. So that's that's what you have to do to do a, re a, a review of any of the pull requests for the documentation or for Mortic or any of the plugins that use GitHub. It's the same workflow, it's the same process, and they all use Gitpod. So hopefully that makes sense. If you ever get stuck, if something doesn't work with Gitpod or if you can't figure out what you need to test or there's a problem or something, please do post it in the product team channel because that's where we kind of like learn that there's an issue. And also it's really a good idea to just share, I'm testing this PR or I'm working on this, this issue because then also we're sort of aware of who's working on stuff and we won't have multiple people testing at the same time when we only really need two people to test. So that's all from me. Thanks very much for being interested in testing and yeah, let's get on with making Mortic even more awesome. Thanks so much for your time and I'll see you around the community. Bye.